My name is Joe Stanfield. I am the director of the Fine Art Department at Hyman Auctions in Chicago, and I am excited to welcome you to our inaugural Sips with Specialists, where you can join a Heinemann specialist at 5 p.m. every other Friday for a short, fun, educational talk about the specialist's topic of choice. We're going to do Asian works of art, antiquities, furniture, decorative arts, design, post-war, contemporary art, jewelry. You'll get to hear about it all. And if you miss the talk, these will live permanently on Heinemann's YouTube and Instagram pages. During coronavirus, we obviously have not had the chance to see many of our clients, so we wanted to say we miss you, we're thinking about you, and we want to remain in engaged with you, even if only virtually for now. So it's Friday night, I help myself relax, uh, I'm going to have a cocktail. And if the mood strikes you at home, I invite you to do the same. I am having a gin and tonic. It's, it's not thematic to anything that I'm going to discuss, but it, it's my favorite. So I figured I'd kick it off that, that way. It's good. When my colleagues and I were chatting about the idea or brainstorming about Sips with Specialist, I had several paintings in mind that I thought would be fun to discuss. And I went back and forth on, on what would be the most interesting and enlightening for clients, but also uh, what would be the most fun for, for, for me personally. I, I, I have the pleasure of appraising and selling thousands of artworks a year, and we have hundreds of great works in our upcoming sales, so I, I certainly had options. but. I kept coming back to one painting and, and, and one specific artist. And to me, this painting and, and this artist checked the, the most boxes for a discussion, as it's by an artist whose work I personally admire, it, it is an art historically significant work, and in addition to my admiration and historical interest, it is by an artist that I think may cause some of you at home to dig a little bit deeper uh, if you're not familiar with, with his work already. Based on these criteria, I, I decided I would like to talk about a painting from 1957 entitled uh, Le Des Amis by the Japanese French artist Fujita. So I figured it out a few weeks ago after concluding that I would be discussing this painting behind me. Uh, in, in my mind, I'm all set. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to put pen to paper. I'm, I'm putting my notes together, thinking about aspects of the painting, Fujita's career, his biography. And I realized the painting is still waiting to have the authenticity confirmed by the, the world's leading expert. And for any of you out there who are, are, are not familiar with the world of authenticating paintings, I can give you a quick tutorial. For many of the artists that we sell, there is an authentication process that we must go through in order to sell the work at auction. This can involve looking at the catalog raisonné, and a catalog raisonné is the definitive book or books uh, on, on the works that are accepted at, as authentic by the artist. Um, if we don't have a catalog raisonné, we, we contact the foremost expert on the artist's work. Sometimes the foremost expert is just a single person. Sometimes it's a committee. Uh, sometimes certain artists have an entire foundation. In this situation, I met with the owner of the Vegeta, who is in the Chicagoland area, brought the painting back to Hindman, and my colleague Juliana was charged with the task of checking the raisonné. The painting was not in the catalog raisonné, so we contacted Sylvie Busson, who is the recognized authority on Vegeta, and after a couple of weeks, she kindly confirmed the authenticity of the painting. This is an incredibly important and necessary part of the process, and we're certainly very grateful to Sylvie Busson for her assistance with this, and her blessing has allowed me to be able to give this little talk today. One of the most compelling aspects of Vegeta's work, and one of the reasons why he caused such a sensation in the early 20th century, is that within his paintings, art historical worlds are colliding. His paintings are east meeting west. Fujita was born in Tokyo in 1886. 
enjoyed a very privileged youth, studied at the Tokyo School of Fine Arts, but was not terribly successful there. Fujita himself said he believed that of the 30 members of his graduating class that he was ranked 16th, and that one of his teachers at his graduation held up his final project, which was a self-portrait, as an example of, quote unquote, how one should not paint. This early life embarrassment only seemed to strengthen Fujita's resolve and encouraged him to leave his native Japan and to realize his art dreams in the center of the art world, which in the first quarter of the 20th century was obviously Paris. Take one more step. After completing his studies in Tokyo, Fujita wasted no time in setting his sights on Paris. He arrived in Paris in 1913, found residence in the artistic community of Montparnasse, ready to become a Western artist. He, he came to Paris with a great deal of excitement and enthusiasm. Unfortunately, his French language skills um, were not as advanced. According to Phyllis uh, Birnbaum in her book, Glory in a Line, a uh, French woman who knew Vegeta well described his French as fluent, but bad. His lack of French did not deter him, and he became an integral part of the milieu of the Roaring Twenties Paris, and the only Japanese member of what we now call the School of Paris. He met everyone, knew everyone, knew Modigliani, Soutine, Diego Rivera, Isidore Duncan, became friends with Picasso, Matisse, and in, in many ways was as well known and equally regarded at this place and time as these modern masters that we know so well today. Vegeta was a very eccentric character and a very unique person, even for an artist in 1920s Paris. He was married five times, so maybe his personality was a bit much for some of his significant others. His signature stylistic attributes included a bowl haircut, a minuscule mustache, huge round glasses, and, and large golden hoop earrings. This was his look. This was his staple look. This is how he was seen when frequenting the, the cafes during his life in Paris. In addition to his confident and unique appearance, he had the ego to match and the friends and the lifestyle to accompany all of this. He was a truly larger-than-life character who, during the 20s, was not only famous, also very successful. Many of the artists who we know better as American viewers today did not share the same amount of success as Vegeta had during this time. Certainly, Fujita maybe isn't a household name now, and, and artists who were maybe struggling more then um, ha have achieved recognition by 2021, but, but 100 years ago, he, he was right there with, with the Picassos and the Matisses of, of the world. The success he enjoyed in the 1920s in Paris was followed by a somewhat nomadic life in the 1930s. He spent some time in New York, South America, specifically Brazil and Argentina. He then returned to his native Japan uh, and, and during World War II supported Japan and created a huge number of paintings depicting Japanese soldiers during the war. And upon the defeat of the Japanese army, Fujita was really dishonored and, and scorned for his nationalism. This had a horrible and lasting effect on him, and, and he left Japan permanently uh, at the end of the 1940s and returned to Paris. Towards the end of his life in France, he actually converted to Catholicism, changed his name to Leonard Vegeta, and this was an homage to Leonardo da Vinci, and his artistic output really started to be predominantly depictions of children, similar to the painting that I have behind me. And that reminds me that we haven't completely touched on his earlier subject matter, which was slightly different. His, his favorite and most accomplished subjects were cats, women, and self-portraits. And he often incorporated numerous elements from these themes in one composition, 
he would have a self-portrait holding a cat with a painting of a woman in, in the background of his studio. So he, he, he really enjoyed the, these elements the, the most. And, and for me, as a cat person, this is what initially attracted me to his oeuvre. He, he, he depicts cats in a very meticulous manner and he accomplishes this effect, not only with paintings, but with drawings and, and with prints. He was a wonderful printmaker, and, and Heinemann has had the pleasure of selling numerous great graphic works o over the years, which, which has been fun, but it's, it's certainly exciting to, to have this painting as well. And I think all of that brings us up to where I wanted to discuss this painting specifically, which will be featured in Heinemann's May 3rd American and European Art Auction. This was painted in 1957 when Fujita was 71 years old. Uh, Les Deux Amis is a very intimate painting in scale, as you can tell. Uh, it's only 18 by 13 inches. It depicts two very stoic adolescents wearing sort of formal attire set in front of a crumbling classical ledge with a cloud-filled sky in the background. One of the girls is slightly taller than the other, which sort of gives you the, the appearance that maybe they're sisters, or this is the older sister and younger sister, maybe they're close friends. They both appear very serious and gaze seemingly beyond us as the viewer. And as, as a viewer, I'm very intrigued by what are they looking at? Why are they so serious? Um, what are their hands doing exactly? They, they each have one hand intertwined with each other and the older girl's right thumb and index finger is in a very interesting pose that appears that she could be holding something. So like a flower or, or a note. And I find that very interesting, very, very intriguing. The, the composition and the drapery are obviously heavily influenced by works from uh, the Italian Renaissance. And the, the faces to me uh, appear to be a reaction to 20th century surrealism, very much in the um, Salvador Dali realm, which, which shows Fujita's continued interest in, in the West and in, in Western art. The, the figures themselves are outlined in black ink, and the surface of the painting is just razor thin, so incredibly thin, the paint application. And that really harkens back to his, his use of traditional Japanese techniques, making this work a classic example of Fujita's melding of two different worlds, the East and, and the West. It is a really compelling and powerful painting to see in person, and I, I, I hope that even during coronavirus, some of you can, can come enjoy it with us here, here at Heinemann. I'm very excited to see what the reaction is from our clients around the world when this work is on the block in just a few months on May 3rd. So thank you for listening to me today. It's been my pleasure to be with all of you, even though virtually. So join us again on Friday, February 12th to hear from Heinemann's Senior Specialist of Luxury Couture and Accessories, Tim Long. And with that, cheers.